Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and we are back with a new episode of the Horizons Author Lounge. And I'm excited because I have a little bit of a blast from the past coming up for today. Um, you know, it's always great when we meet our um, fellow service members who serve about the time that we did. And so my my guest knew me when I was Sergeant Lawson in Korea. So I'm really excited about talking with him. He has an excellent book. Um, all about leadership um, that we're going to be talking about. And then later on in the show, we're going to be talking with another author, Miss Natasha, and I'm looking forward to talking with her as well. But without any further ado, I'm going to introduce to some of you and present to others, Mr. David Sledge. Hello, how are you? Uh, good evening, I'm fine, how you doing? <laughs> I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. Um, so um, I was just telling the audience that um, you wrote this book that's all about leadership, but um, I know we've seen a lot of leadership books in the past, but this one is a little bit different. So um, I first want to thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for wanting to be on the show, but I also want you to tell me a little bit about your book and how your book is just a little bit different from the normal leadership books that we see out there. Yes, ma'am. And thank you for having me on the show. I think the, the biggest thing, the biggest difference between this book and other leadership books is I talk about a lot of, of uh, you know, like empathy. And, you know, a lot of people forget that even though we're leaders, you have to be a great follower before you become a good leader. You know, and I, and I think, too, for, for me, uh, I look at some of the things like communication. Communication has a lot of people don't know communication is one of the, the biggest things to, to leadership. You got to be able to communicate yeah. above yourself and below yourself and also you got to be able to talk because people people don't listen you can talk all day but some people just don't listen to what you have to say you know so i think that's one of the biggest differences just to, that lost art of communication trying to bring it back yes so um it's so funny that you say you say that people don't listen and i think sometimes people forget that that's the biggest part of communication and you know when when people think communicating you think about how they can get their thoughts across but listening is a huge piece of that as well. Yes, ma'am. It really is. Because, you know, like I said, we, because, you know, we go in as leaders, you know, we, something we was trained about in the military is that, you know, as a leader, you know, you, 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 you think that everything you say is, is going to be correct, but it's not because, you know, right. you're only strong as the weakest link, you know. Now, um, is this, I know that this is something that you so, learned. To add to, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to uh, add a little bit more to that the communication piece, but it's okay. No, no, no. Go, go right ahead. You go ahead, and then I'll then I'll make my point. Yes, man. So I also, so I just want uh, to 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 uh, talk about just a little bit more because as I said we talk about lead, listening and 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 also leading. You know, you as a leader, you, you know, you have to be a great follower because I, I think too for me is you know I started out in the National Guard. I don't know if I ever told him about that, but I, I had no leadership skills at all. You know, uh, my drill sergeant told me, you know, I'm a great follower, but one of these days you're gonna be a great leader. So I just I look at it this fact that I listened to everything and I wrote down a lot of things that people did, the good, bad, and different, and it helped me out in, in in writing this book and in my leadership in the military too. So now, um, so my question um was, you know, did it take a while for you to learn all of this throughout your military career? Because you know, we all we all learn about leadership from the very beginning. But when did it really start to sink in for you? Honestly, I think it sunk in probably once I uh, made uh, W3 in the, in the Navy, because, you know, even though I was a chief in the Navy, E7 in the Navy, and, you know, leading people, uh, leader of men and women, uh, I think, too, for me, it, it hit me because I started failing. Because when I was mm -hmm. younger, you know, you don't really fail, you know, because somebody's always there. Hey, go do this, go do that. Now I went from being enlisted to officer, and and, and when I start failing out and I learned a lesson, is that you, you you can do everything you think is right, but sometimes somebody else knows better than you know. So you just, right. just took notes. You know, I, I write a lot, do a journal, and just started learning. Like I said, W three, and uh, it helped me out at, in my journey as I got older, and and I think to the stage I got to in life, because it's not just the age, but the stage I I, I got to. So. 
Is this something that you share in the book um, for um, future leaders? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And they're talking about empathy, too, because, you know, we can, you know, people say sympathy all the time, but empathy, too. You also, you know, everybody's not going to be uh, able to uh, uh, be a leader. You know, you, you have to learn. It's not just, you know, people always say, you know, you're born a leader. I don't believe in that. I don't think, uh, you know, some some things you were born with and some things you're not. God gave you a lot. He gave you five senses, but he also gave you the, the discernment to to be able to, to see things in a, in a different light, too. And, and you have to not, I share that in the book. I share in the book that talk about, you know, the, the outside influences to leadership. What are some of the outside influences? So really family, family is one, uh, you know, the people that you're around, I always tell people surround yourself by positive people, positive places and positive things. Uh, and cause uh, influence, you know, cause you, you, you look at it like playing sports, you know, I know most of us from the South and we, we play some kind of sport. You know, the coach always was coaching you, hey, do this, do this. But then we, we hear him, but did we listen to what he was saying? But as we got older, we, we look back and say, you know what? What coach was telling us is really true. You know, you, you have to be around those positive people. You have to, your family has a lot to do with your leadership. And then also, you know, who you uh, decide to, to call your friends has a lot to do with that too. Absolutely, absolutely. So now when did you decide that you wanted to write a book? You know, it's funny. I, I've been, so I, I came in the Navy in 1990 and I, and I started journaling because I went to, you know, during the Gulf War, during uh, Desert, Shield, Desert Storm and Desert Shield, you know, I was 19 and and out, out to sea, never been on a ship and, and lost. So I just started writing. Uh, but I, I, you know, the journal piece was it's just writing different things, you know, especially the people I ran, you know, ran into because you know during that time, you know, it was early nineties, you know, a lot of people was in the navy from the sixties and the seventies because they got out and came back in, and you know, and there was some things going on, you know, in, in the military that wasn't uh, like it is today. You know, we had, still was dealing with a little bit of racism and different things, you know, and and coming out of Alabama, it was different. You know, because right. I'm used to seeing who I see, but I, I just I got that book to write. But I really the last few years, I just started writing because I saw people how they got treated. And and, and I always tell people it's intentional conversations. And, and that was, that's what made me start writing, uh, you know, about leadership and, and another book I wrote about your blessings. So I just uh, I, I don't know. I just just got that book and I, and I see people like yourself writing it. And I know you've been writing for a while, and that just you know got it motivated me to to, to step out on on faith and uh, and write the books. You mean I motivated you, little old me. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. That's why. That's why I'm on this show today because I, I I saw you and I've been seeing you and you you're doing great things and you you try to help out you know hunger uh, uh, authors like myself you know to get out there and I really appreciate that. So yes, ma'am. Thank you. I mean, I think that's a great reminder. I'm really. I'm really honored and glad that you said that, but it's, it's also a reminder that you never know who you're affecting when you're when you're living your when you're living your life honestly and um, um, with honor, um, so to speak. You know, you're you're not you're not doing things the slick way. You're you're not taking advantage of people, and you actually want to help people. You never know who you're um, touching or who you're affecting, um, which is I guess that was one of the reasons why I asked you why you decided to write a book, because I'm quite sure that you impacted a lot of leaders along the way in your career. How many years was it for you? 33 years in two months. Wow. 33 years. And that's <laughs> no, a really long, that is no, a really long no, time. No. Most people don't go past 30. And so I, I made CW05, so, you know, uh, that's why I was able to go uh, for the Navy, go uh, 33 years. Amazing. And you were in Korea. I was in Japan when I, when I met you. You know, we came from the oh, coast. Okay. We used to fly over for the, the Black History program all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Mm -hmm. That was a great event. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was. Yeah. It really was. I miss those days. We we talk about it all the time. So it's very yeah. Well, um, now... Now you've written this first book, 
what do you, are you planning on using this as um, kind of a launching pad to doing other things such as speaking engagements, uh, mentoring, or anything to that effect? Yes, ma'am. I'm actually a mentor. And, uh, I, I go out and do a lot of mentor. I, I work with, uh, uh, I don't know if you know, Norman Powell uh, plays for the, uh, the the Clippers, L.A. Clippers. He, he has oh, yeah, an understanding yeah. grind. So I actually went through the, yes, ma'am, through the, uh, the Naval, National Naval Officer Association. We do a lot of mentoring with them every other Saturday at Lincoln High School here in uh, San Diego. So I do that. Uh, I'm part of a couple of organizations that we mentor kids. But definitely, and I coach high school basketball, too. So definitely uh, mentoring uh, the kids and uh, definitely want to do some speaking events. Yes, ma'am. But uh, but also, too, this is that's not my first book. The the, the first oh, book is okay. called Embrace Blessings. Yes, ma'am. Well, do but you have the first leadership book? Yes ma'am. yes, ma'am. I had it right here. So the, this Let's is the, this is the first book. Can you see it? Yes. You can hold it a little closer that's to the, the camera. Book. Yes, ma'am. Yes, there we go. Mm -hmm. And now what's that's Embrace the Blessings? That's the first self public. So really it's about, intent. we talk about intentional conversations and treating people how you want to be treated. That's it's really in there. And then also I talk about the tongue, you know, like the Bible speaks, you know, a tongue is like a sword, it cuts you. So you got to remember what you mm -hmm. tell people and what you say to people is what they, what you was alluding to earlier. You really have to be careful what you say and, and, and how you act because your character right. is judged by what you say out of your mouth, you know? So, and that's, it's really about that. And just embracing your blessings and trusting the process because it is a process, everything. God has a blessing for all of us, but it's a process to it. Amen to that. Now, the second second book, do you have that book with you? This is right. Here. This one. Yes. This oh, yeah. I love the yeah. cover. Yeah. This one. I, I right. love the cover. I, I love the um the color, the color blocking on the title. I love um, seeing you in your uniform. It's very attention getting. Yes, man. And, and that was my, my, my thing. My goal was to, to really, because you know, they, they say the first thing a person does, especially for a man, first thing we see is with eyes. You, you know, so I wanted people to be able to see that book and say, okay, oh, this guy, he does have some credibility because he was in the military, but not everybody thinks that way. But two, you know, I was I was sharp. You know, you see a, a young uh, young black man, you know, you know, on the cover. And uh, and uh, that's that's a good thing. That's what I was looking for to try to do. Well, I'm glad that you made that point because, um, you know, I think we're starting to get to the point where um, many of our um, African-American men and women are they're not as regarded and they're not they're not always seen in the most positive light. And often people will make assumptions about us based on the color of our skin. So when they are able to see book covers like yours. It shows people what's what is still possible, and it shows our young people um, that there is still something to aspire to, um, and that you know a black a black man a black woman can make it um, in the military or in whatever industry you decide to pursue. Yes, ma'am, definitely. And I also, and I think this way all the time. You know, uh, I stay humble because you know the saying is either be humble or be humbled. So I just mm. thank God for where where, where I am. Uh, in life and uh, and able to give back, you know, it's kind of emotional because I think about my mother passed away, but I always think about what she told me, you know, you always treat people how you want to be treated. You know, you always try to look out for people because, you know, somebody looked out for you. Somebody pulled you up by the bootstrap and, and, and had you and led you in the right direction. So just want to give back and make sure people understand this across all the boards, you know, no matter what, you know, uh, race, creed or whatever, but just understand that, you know, by being who you are, and your character, people can live off of that. And they, they have somebody to look up to, like you just said. You have somebody that looks like you, that, that may not and that act like you too, and, and and give you something to strive for. And that's what I really was trying to do with these books and also who I am as a person. Amen to that. Love it. Love it. Um now um quick question. Um oh <laughs> Lee Elder, he said hello. <laughs> But um, quick, quick oh, question. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um, when when you're when you're writing these books, what are some what is let's go back to the um, the second book, um, the one that we're talking about now, leadership. 
Um, what are some of the things that you touch upon in the book? So, uh, like again, I talked about empathy. You know, I always mm -hmm. tell everybody to look in the book too sometimes because you know, you're right. <laughs> but I talk about leadership through adversity, uh, being in adverse situations, and navigating through uh, crisis and uncertainty. Because, you know, we we all go through things in our lives, you know, but you, you're trying to lead through those. And it's, that's not for military, it's for any leadership position. So when I right. talk about the navigating crisis through crisis and uncertainty, because every day is a different day and tomorrow's not promised. Um, and then also the effective communication again, that you're going to hear a lot of that in the book about communication and you just got to be effective about it. Cause you can talk, you know, I tell people, don't talk to me, don't talk at me, talk to me. You know, that's why I talk about it in the book too. Let's talk about that because I don't think that people understand. It sounds like it's a great slogan, but it's so real. Don't talk at me, talk to me. Can you talk a little bit about what that actually means? So to me, what it means is I can, you know, how we, you know, oh, for, for example, my kids, you know, I tell my kids, I got that from my kids, though, because, you know, dad would say, hey, I need you to do this, this, and this. I need you to go through this. But also, I'm telling you to do it, but I'm not really understanding uh, that what I'm telling you is that, that, that you may not be at that stage in your life to understand what I'm telling you. Also, I tell people, too, with that being said, is you have to meet people where they're at, you know. And, and so that's that's what I mean by the effective communication. Don't talk at me. Talk to me. Because a lot of times right. we do a lot of yelling. In the military, we do a, yell, a lot of yelling. You can yell at a person, but that person is not paying attention. You look in their eyes, you can tell they're not paying attention. But if you if you right. can relate to them and get them to understand, you know, again, meet them where they're at, then they'll do. They'll go to, to beyond uh, space for you, you know? Yeah. Or as my mom says, I hope they answered your question. Yes, man. It it did. It did. I mean, it's yes, about talking right. to make sure that you're getting understanding, mm -hmm. making sure that the person you're talking to actually understands you, and then you also understand where they're coming from as well. It's all about effective communication. Yes, man. That's true. That's what you think. Mm -hmm. Now you and have also a website. one other thing I would say about in the okay. book uh, talking about. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was gonna say the, just the, the emotional, the emotional piece of leadership. You know, a lot of times we do wear our, our emotions on our sleeves, but we have to be careful with that too. You know, there's nothing wrong with you know coming from your heart, but a lot of times you if you wear it on your sleeve and you you're not uh, receptive to again to that communication piece, you're not listening to what other people are telling you because it can actually keep you out of trouble or keeping somebody from getting hurt. And that's what I just want to add. I'm uh, uh, thank you. No, it's okay. There's a little bit of a delay. So sometimes we might accidentally cut each other off. And so I just want the audience to know we're not trying to be rude to each other. We're just trying to overcome that little bit of little bitty delay that we have going on. It's like maybe a second or two. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so what I was gonna I was gonna mention your website because you actually have a page with um on Shopify, an actual Shopify store where you um, have a lot of those mentoring um, sayings that you say they're actually on T-shirts, um, hats, coffee mugs and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about the store? Yes, man. So the, the store came, I, I, you know, people always say, you know, meet somebody, greet somebody, teach somebody. Right. So one day I was, you know, I've been saying this for a couple of years, but one day I was just sitting down. I said, like, you know what? I need to come up with something because I, the reason I say greet, meet and teach is because, you know, again, you talk about, uh, you know, you say because, you know, that, that lost trade of speaking to people has has gone away because everybody mm. uses their cell phones or they are afraid to speak to somebody because they think somebody's trying to take something from them. So I just wanted to make sure that I give, you know, give back to say, you know, greet, meet and teach. You know, but also that the reason I made the store, because, you know, you can look at your cup and say, you know what, pay it forward. I'm passing down my knowledge that I gained to somebody that does not have that does not have that knowledge. And that's why I came with the store. But I do have hats and and T-shirts and all that stuff. And, and I have my shirt on now, uh, one of my polos, you know, so but I really just wanted to share the the, the word with people, you know, to understand you, it's, it's OK. To, to 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 have an intentional conversation. Just have a conversation with somebody because you're going to learn something from them. You know, either they're going to learn from you or you're going to learn from them. 
And that conversation doesn't always have to be with somebody who you feel is more important than you or outranks you. Sometimes the least the least of us can be the best of us. Yes, ma'am. Because a child, they always say a child can can help somebody too. Is it once a child you become again? You know, you get old, but you know, uh, they always you know. And I heard this in the country. You know, a, a little bit of baby can show you something that that a grown person doesn't know. You know, so they adapt to a lot of things. So, yes, man, that's, that's one of the reasons I wanted to start the store. But, yes, my store is online. Uh, and I definitely ask people to to go out and buy and, and support the brand. Okay, so we, we do have the website on the screen right now. Greet One, Meet One, Teach One, LLC. That sounds like a very intentional name for your um company. It, it is. Yes, ma'am. And that's why, again, I talk about that intentional, them intentional conversations, because, you know, uh, uh, you you see something like the book, the book, you saw the cover. But then you start talking and just start talking to people, just speaking. A simple conversation will take it a long way. And the reason I, and I got to go back to one reason I, I wanted to go Greek one, meet one, teach one, is because, I, you know, I, uh, when I was in Japan, I met this young man one day. I was walking down a pier, you know, officer. You know, and, and he saluted me and I saluted him back. And I asked him, how are you doing today? You know, a lot of people do that out of just, hey, just just, just a, a muscle memory. How you doing? But I really <laughs> meant, how are you doing? So when I did that, he took it as I was asking him how his day was going. So he stopped and talked to me and we was talking, had about an hour conversation. And within that conversation, he told me he was going to hurt himself. He was mm. having issues back home. And 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 didn't didn't know who to talk to. We thought his chain of command didn't listen to him. And and I wind up talking to this young man and getting him to go with me. And I took him to his command and then got him help. And now the, the young man's a lieutenant in the navy. You know because you know you wow. somebody stopped and talked to him and had an intentional conversation and asked. I asked him genuinely, uh, what how was his day? You know. Yeah, you you can change somebody's life just by showing a little bit of interest in them. Yes, ma'am, and that's that's one reason that 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 name came, and uh, uh, you know, but also talk about authenticity, being authentic, being your authentic self is another reason I wanted to do that because I want people to be who they are, you know, be yeah. who you say you are, you know. So yes, ma'am. Beautiful. Um, so if you can show us the book cover one more time, we only have a few minutes left in the interview. Yes, ma'am. Oh, can you see that? Now, where can we where can we find this book? So it's on my website, and also it, it's on uh, Amazon. It is on Amazon, and I ask people to do you either go if you go to Amazon. I don't have a signed copy on there, but if you go to my website, I actually sign it and I mail them out to you. But the Amazon one, I definitely want people because you know you want to get the word out. You know, go on and do the reviews and all that stuff. But you also can do a review on my site too. Uh, but uh, either way. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. There's nothing wrong with the book being available in multiple places. It, it's a better chance for your target reader to find your book. Yes, ma'am. And who is your target reader? Is it um because I know when we're looking at the book, we see you in uniform, and some people might think that this is only geared toward military leaders, but who is actually your target audience? So honestly, the, the target audience is anybody that you know, not anybody, but people that's trying to you can you not may not be a leader right now. You're aspiring to be a leader. You you may you may be in charge of the choir at church. You may be in charge of the money at you know church. Some you know I want I want people that that really aspire to 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 understand their self and to understand leadership roles as they may get in. Even the high school football player or or the high school girls basketball player. I want them. That's the target. But, you know, is and I don't want to put an age limit on it, but, you know, because you got kids that's 12 and 13 as leaders, you know, these days, you know, but I want I want people that want to aspire to be leaders to to, to read this book and to share this book with other people. Awesome. Awesome. Um, OK, so I want to first um, or once again, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for um, sharing your insights about leadership. Do you have any final words you would like to leave the audience? Just so uh, I think one of the biggest things for me is, you know, and I, and I say this, if you somebody you hadn't talked to in your life in a while, give them a call because, you know, we, we all 
need somebody to call us because a lot of times, especially in this transition for me, it's only been seven months and, and you know, used to talking to people and calling people, you know, you know, as well as I know that time stops. But if you hadn't talked to somebody in a while, just call and check on them. Because also I've learned too, it's okay not to be okay. So just check on, on, on it, it don't have to be a loved one. It could be a friend, somebody you hadn't talked to in a long time, just give them a call. But I really thank you for having me on the show and it's been enlightening. Yeah, I was nervous as all I do is, but actually I, I really enjoyed myself and it's great to see you. I try to keep people comfortable on the show, you know? <laughs> Yes, man. But no, thank but thank you for that. Um, because I'm a I'm a huge believer in that people really don't care what you have to say unless they know that you care. And if you if you don't care, people are not going to want to run through a wall for you. They're not going to they're not going to want to support you. But when they know that you care about them as people and not just about the mission, it's like you open a lot of doors that way. Yes, ma'am. That's true. Amen. Well, thank you once again for being on the show. If you ever would like to come back, all you have to do is say the word. <laughs> um, congratulations on 33 amazing years in our United States military. Thank you for your service. And um, thank you for being a mentor to people like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes, ma'am. You have a great night. You too. You have a blessed night. Yes, ma'am. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, y'all. That was an amazing conversation with um, Chief Warrant Officer David Sledge, retired from the United States Navy, 20, or excuse me, 33 amazing years, and he is still mentoring leaders. So um, if you haven't already, please make sure you get his book um, and experience some of the insights that he has about leadership. You may never decide to join the military, but um, the, the insights in this book will be great for whatever leader you turn out to be. So I hope you, I hope you guys will get the book. Amazing. So we're going to move over to our next guest. But before we bring our next guest, I do want to remind you, if you have not done so already, please make sure you download the application for the Meet the World Graduating Senior Scholarship. I'm trying to bring it up and I'm having a little trouble with it. So I'm just going to tell you all about it. But um, if you uh, message me on LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram, or what have you, I will make sure that you get the link to the application. Um, make sure that your graduating seniors fill out this application because I am giving $1,000 to a graduating senior. I don't care if you have a full ride scholarship, that $1,000 is going to go far toward buying books, toward buying supplies, toward buying um, clothes for school. It's not just about the education. It's about the experience. There's my, <laughs> there's my flyer. So, um, and this is about, this is a, a, a fully well-rounded scholarship. We're not just looking at grades. We're also looking at your community service. We're looking at um, your writing skills. So we're asking you to do a 500 word essay. Um, you need a letter of recommendation. And of course you need a completed scholarship application which should be completed neatly because that goes a long way toward um, winning this scholarship. So um, email us at info at mtwimagesolutions.com. You can DM me on any of our social media um, platforms or you can just scan a QR code right here on the flyer. And um, we're looking forward to getting those scholarships. The deadline is April 30th, which is right around the corner. Don't think just because today's April 15th, which is tax day. And I'm going to tell you, I kept saying April 15th is a long time away. And guess what time I did, what day I did my taxes? I did them today at nine o'clock this morning because I did not, I kept wasting time and not get my taxes done. But they're done on time though. So I'm telling you, April 30th is, is not that far away. So make sure that your kids fill out this scholarship so they can get this money. All right. So now with any further, without any further ado, I am going to bring on our next guest, Miss Natasha Hughes-Smith. Hello. Hello, Dr. Rhonda. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you for being on the show with me tonight. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. 
Well, um, let's just jump right in there. Can you tell us who, who is Natasha Hughes Smith? Well, Natasha Hughes Smith is just uh, someone who has always loved storytelling and writing and never thought in a million years that I would actually produce a book, write a book. Wow. But back in 2008, when I was laid off and was trying to reconnect with the things I loved, I started writing. But got back to work quickly and it just sat for 12 years and the pandemic happened. I was like, well, you know, I have no more excuses. Let me go ahead and finish. And so it's just been uh, reigniting the love I have for writing and storytelling. So now I'm on my uh, fourth published book and working on my fifth one now. And the, the books are actually a series. Is that correct? Yes, I write suspenseful romance thrillers, and they are a series, but they can be read as standalones. You can read them as companion books, or you can just read it as a series. Wow. Suspense, romance, and thrillers. Suspenseful thriller. romance thrillers. I compare it to what you see on Lifetime. So the romance is just a catalyst for all the action and the plot twist going. I like it. I mean, and you know, for me, that is actually but like a, a no hate against people who write romance books because I love a good romance every once mm -hmm. in a while. But I really like it when that romance is tied up in a really good suspenseful plot line. Um, yes. something, give me something to care about other than the fact that you guys are going to fall in love at the end and mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle you're going to have sex. I want to know. <laughs> I want I want to know what else is going on around you. I mean, right. that, that's, that's what really gets my gears turning. Exactly. Some surprises, you know, for the reader. So it's not where you just, you know, go through the motions and read it without any, you know, surprises. I want some shocking, um, you know, things to happen in the books. Yes. Okay, shocking. So tell me about <laughs> this, fourth, <laughs> this fourth installment. Um, that's Selfless Love. Um, it is the final uh, installment in the series. Um, it takes place in present day. The character Shannon was first introduced in Reflections. She's best friends with Vivian. And Shannon's like so many women. They, you know, she always chooses the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I have him in the shadow. It doesn't matter how he looks. He's the same MO, you know, not dependable. Someone who's just, you know, mooching off, her, off of her. Um, she's always giving of herself and not getting the whole lot in return until she meets Raymond Brown. And then he's trying to expose her to a whole new way of being and dating. But sometimes we get caught up in those dysfunctional uh, ways, things that are comfortable for us, even if they're dysfunctional. And so there's some resistance and a lot of uh, some suspense going on in the story, as well as a result of her clinging on to dysfunction. Oh, that, that's the title in and of itself. <laughs> right. Clinging <laughs> on to dysfunction. I like that. <laughs> so um I, I understand you take um a lot of pains in um crafting your characters. Um, is it that you want to make your characters believable, or do you want to make them so that people will care about them? I want them to be believable and relatable. Um, actually, the, the story that started it all, Reflections, was based on a dream I had. And so I took notes from you know the basic premise of that dream and then just developed, developed it into a series. But all of the ladies, the main characters, are different. I don't want them to be cookie cutter. Um, they go from educated professional to uh, one who is just out of high school and trying to get from under you know, the thumb of her mother to one who is working in a meat shop with her dad, um, back to Shannon, who's also educated. But um, like I said, that dysfunction you know, has played a role in, in her upbringing and, and unfortunately in her dating life. So I try to make them different characters, relatable mm -hmm. um, to different women that can either relate personally or see their friends or, like I said, themselves and the characters in some way. How do you um, craft your characters? Do you do you find, sometimes I'll look at um, TV characters and I'll say, man, I wonder 
what Kenya would be like, for instance, if we did this or this, or why don't people understand Kenya? And I'll make a whole character just based on Kenya. Or I might, I might be reading a book and a character in another book might spark my imagination on um, something that I want to do. Or I could just be driving down the street and just look at, or, or just minding my business. And I will put a whole story together based on whatever that, um, whatever that event is going on at that time. Um, so there are different ways that people will craft their characters. How do you do yours? Um, I kind of start with that main character. And I think about how friendship groups are, you know, even though they may have some um, characteristics that are similar, a lot of differences in the personalities. You may have one that's more outgoing. You may have one more reserved. And so when I um, started with Vivian, I had her to be the more outgoing one, more self-assured. And so then when I started looking at her friends, then I crafted them in a different dynamic. And Shannon's one of her friends, even though she's educated like Vivian, she has some self-esteem issues. And so um, I focused on that in the first book. And then when I gave her her own story, every the reader was able to learn why she had the issues that she had. So I kind of base everything around that main character and thinking about their friend group and the dynamics of the family um, to help shape the character. That makes sense. And do you kind of, do you also give her a character that is almost her polar opposite? So that's going to be her antagonist? Um, yes. Uh, in uh, Reflections, uh, one of the friends turns out to be a friend of me. Um, then, and Bianchi, one of the friends has some jealousy, uh, cause sometimes in friendships, sometimes jealousy can be underneath the surface. And so I address that in some ways and some of the stories and also having wealth, wealth of lies where the mother was jealous of her own daughter. So, um, unfortunately some people experience that as a dynamic with their mother when it's supposed to be a loving relationship, but then you have, you know, that jealousy dynamic or uh, the mother mistreating the child because they're angry with the father. Right. So those things factor into the character development. Now, um, since I've been um, doing these shows, because um, I also host um, co-host the show on Tuesday nights as well, and mm -hmm. I meet a lot of authors who um, will call themselves either planners or pantsers writing from writing by the seat of their pants. Mm -hmm. Which one do you think you are? It sounds like you're a planner though. I am. I outline the stories. I do. Um, and sometimes I may deter from the original outline, but I feel it's best to have an outline for me to help guide me and make sure that I'm touching on all the points. So it's a seamless, you know, it's a good flow of the story and things yeah. are, you know, logical. <laughs> now, I, I agree. I like to at least have a plan. It might change a little bit as I start writing, but I don't think I can just sit down and say chapter one. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need I, to have something to start with. Do that, especially you know, just like writing papers for college and high school. I outline, and so it's just a good way for me to make sure that I'm on target and and that's flowing well, not missing any points. Now you said this is going to be the final book in the series. Um, why did yes. you decide to end the series? Um, I could stay with these folks forever, but I have so many other stories I want to tell. Um, but some of my readers do have um, interest in some of the other characters where they wanted me to write stories about them. So I'm going, I plan to write two short stories that can um, be like companion pieces to the series, but as far as the series itself, I believe Selfless Love is the final full novel. Let's see, you know what's gonna happen? Your fans are gonna be like, no, <laughs> right. I need to know what's going to happen. <laughs> right, I can only, only do so much. I'm not at that stage where I can work on multiple books at one time. Yeah. So no, it takes me about almost a year for one. So, and I have uh, at least two other stories um, that I have notes on that I'm going to write after my current work in progress. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, so now I will say this though. Um, so this is the last in the series. 
Mm -hmm. um, how long has the book been out? Uh, it came out, I believe, last August of 2023. Okay, so, so almost a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have you? Um, are you ready to start right, working on the next book? Oh, I started immediately once I finish one, I start writing the other. So, oh, okay, so you don't waste any time. Yeah, I'm already halfway into the next, but currently I'm working on the production of the audio book for um, Selfless Love. So the audio book will be released probably sometime into this month at the latest beginning of May. Well, that's wonderful. Congratulations on that too. Thank you. Yeah, the other three are available in audiobooks, so I got to make, you know, everything available so it's balanced. I have yet to turn, I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I have yet to turn any of my books into audiobooks. Um, I'm, I've been planning on it. Um, I've picked my my um, my voice actors mm -hmm. because I have some great voice actors who live right in this house. <laughs> um, so I just have to do it. And so now you just made me feel bad because you said all of your books are audio books now. So I have I have no no excuses. Yep, yeah, I did it immediately with the first one um, that was published in November 2020, and then and. January 2021 started working on the audio. Um, I didn't know at the time that a lot of independent authors, new authors don't do that. My thought was just to try to make it available on, on as many platforms um, as possible. And so I do enjoy working with real people, with you know actresses, voice actors. And so um, if you pick up anyone in the series, you will have a real voice actor, real emotion, no AI here. I'm not a fan of AI usage. Yes. Um, jobs are too important for us to just go the easy route using AI. Right. And I, I have heard that there, um, there is um, a system out there now where you can use AI to voice your book and you can sell it as an audio book. Mm -hmm. But you're right. There are so many actors and actresses out there who are looking for work. And this is this is great for them. I mean, it's it's great method methodology. Um, it's great practice. Um, so why not why not shoot them some um, some money and let them let them voice these stories and bring these stories to life? Exactly, because the more you give into the AI, you may look up and your job may be gone to AI. So we need to support real people and. Uh, and yeah, so I, my my stories have real emotion behind them because I have the real you know, voice actors voicing the characters. That's wonderful. Now, do you work through um, Audible? I do. Yeah, I'm published through um, Amazon, so I use Audible and iTunes. They're available in both formats, platforms. So now, um, when you choose the um, actors for your book, because I would tell you, I'm an Audible person. And not just audible. I like audio books um, because I because I have such a busy schedule, which I should have been listening to my book today. I knew something was off today when I was doing all that driving today. I wasn't listening to my audio books. But um, whenever I go for a long drive, if I'm by myself, sometimes I prefer to be by myself because mm -hmm. I can listen to my audio book. When mm -hmm. I go for my walks during the day, I'm listening to an audio book. Mm -hmm. I just don't have as much time as I would like to sit down and actually read a physical book anymore. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that a lot of people are like that. I've had someone tell me once, I would read your books if, if you had them on audio, because um, um, I just can't sit down and read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, that's so a growing market. That's what I'm, and that's what I was going to say. You, you have probably reached an entirely different audience just based on audio books. Because there are people like me who just don't have the time anymore, but love to read. Mm -hmm. And then there are some people who they just say, I can't read a book. It's boring. Um, it makes me go to sleep. I have to listen to it. So listening to an audio book keeps them engaged. Yes. And my sales double. My audio books outnumber the, um, the other formats combined. Wow. That's awesome. So now, how do you choose the actor or actress who's going to read your book? And do you ever have two? I've noticed that there are some um, audiobooks where there's a man who voices the male characters and a woman who voices the female characters. Mm -hmm. But then most of them have the same person who voices all of the characters. How do you decide? 
No? Yes, I've used just one voice actor per book. And I simply just take auditions through the ACX system for Audible. And I've been very fortunate to have found some great voices that way. So these are people I didn't know and have built, you know, um, a rapport with and a partnership with. That's awesome. So, so now you've gotten to know these people and they're kind of your go-to people now. Yeah, they are. And then, you know, they help with marketing and um, it's, it's a partnership. It's a true partnership. Oh, that's that's huge. I didn't even think about that piece of it. They're they're excited because they voiced the book, so they're marketing that book as well. Exactly. I didn't even think about that. That's that's a good point, there, Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now, what is your plan? I'm seeing now you now you've had your fourth book published, or mm -hmm. excuse me, the fourth in the series um, published. Yeah, that's the fourth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And but now you're working on you're working on your fifth book. Yes. Do you have an idea of when that one will um hit the stands or do you not want to just say yet? Well, I'm hoping um the fall. It, it might be early fall, it might be late fall, but I'm definitely hoping for this year. And it's a little something different. All of my stories so far have taken place in the metropolitan Detroit area because I'm that's where I'm from, Michigan. Okay. And so this story will take place in Mississippi. So it's going to have a, a country or small town setting. So it's going to be a little bit different, but it's still going to have all the plot twists and the action, the romance, and, and maybe even some lessons learned. I, I like to for my characters to grow in some way. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Now, when you, um, is this going to be an actual country town or is it one that you made, you made up? At first it was going to be an actual town it was going to be the center um, piece of the story. But then I decided I can have more create, creative leeway if I create my own town. So uh, the main town is fictitious, but it's near real town. So. Okay. Wow. So you have, a, you have a lot going on. <laughs> I mean, and I'm, but I'm here for it though. I mean, you know, creating audio books, you're writing your fifth book, you're promoting your fourth book. Um, how are you compartmentalizing it? I'm sorry. And work full time. I was just about to ask that. <laughs> so how are you compartmentalizing all of that? I'm sure it takes, you have to plan your calendar very carefully. I do. And primarily my weekends are dedicated to writing right now. If I'm in a crunch trying to, um, you know, finish up a project or, or help with the editing, I might do something during the week, but primarily it's weekend for the writing. Well, that that's about right. I mean, I think my nights and weekends are either writing or editing or something. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> In fact, I have a couple of people who've already asked me about editing projects. They need to go ahead and send these books so I can get started. Oh, wow. <laughs> you have a busy plate too. Yes. But, you know, I, I feel like when you're busy doing something that you love, mm -hmm. it hits a little differently than being busy with a job that you hate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my day job takes up a lot of time, but I love what I do. And then working on um, helping people become published writers, um, helping people to become better writers, and then um, promoting independent authors, like um, in this setting right here. This is what I enjoy doing. So it doesn't it doesn't feel as bad. I mean, yes, do I get tired? Of course, I get tired. Right. Do I wish that sometimes I just have a Saturday where I can do absolutely nothing? Of course. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to actually saying, okay, I have to do this, at least it's something that I enjoy to do. I enjoy doing. It's not a, I have to do this. It's mm -hmm. an, I get to do this, which is totally different. Yes. And then in addition to writing, we have to, I have to make sure I spend time getting out in front of people so I can actually sell the books. And uh, so I do that quite a bit. And then I have an event coming up this Saturday where I'm yes. going to be with other um, authors that I'm, I'm hosting an event, uh, author pop up. So down. Oh, this is your event. I was just I actually about to ask first. you about the April twentieth event. Yeah, um, sure. but I didn't realize it was your event. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Um, yeah, talking stories with Natasha presents an author and vendor pop up. It's going to be this Saturday at um, downtown Auburn Hills at Vantage Point Event Center. 
from 11 to 3. It's going to be local Michigan authors. So it's going to be about uh, 15 to 20 of us. They're selling our books, uh, merchandise, I have a vendor there also. So it's just a, a good way if, if people enjoy getting out, meeting authors, talking to them in more detail about their work, it would be a great venue to attend. And what time does it get started? Did you say? From 11 to 3 p.m. Okay, well, I put your um, website, talkingstorieswithnatasha.company.site. Yes, and if you go to Instagram or Facebook and look me up, author Natasha Hugh Smith, then you can get more information on those platforms. All right, so um, is it, well, I'm guessing the answer to this question is yes, but I'm going to ask anyway. Okay. Is it too late if there's an author in the Michigan area who said, man, I want to be a part of that. Can they still do it? Or I is it too late? One or two um, spots available. Oh, see, I'm glad I asked. Somebody's going to be able to get out there. Yeah, so if you go to uh, Facebook or Instagram, there's some information, and then you can inbox me, um, and I can give you more details. Awesome. So everybody, make sure that you um, go to um, Natasha's um, web, or excuse me, not website, but her Instagram and her Facebook to get more information about the event, and then go to the website, which is located on the screen right now, um, so you can get more information about the book. And can you hold the book up one more time? Um, yes. On that website, you can purchase a signed copy of uh, all four. This is uh, <laughs> so I was uh, looking at the camera, so I just focus <laughs> on what I'm doing. Reflections is the first novel, and Wealth of Lies is the second. It's a prequel. It takes place in 1955. And then Bianchi takes place in 1970 about the fictitious mob family that's mentioned throughout the series. So and all of those are in the same series? Yes. So um, so you said that the front the prequel takes mm -hmm. place in 1955. Yes. And then Bianchi takes place in 1970. I consider these companion, like if you didn't want to read mm -hmm. all four, you can read these two. Uh, Ricky Bianchi. Ricky Bianchi is introduced in Wealth of Lies. So, and Bernard Barrington, who's in Wealth of Lies, is also in Bianchi. So just like with Reflections and Selfless Love, Shannon is introduced in Reflections. And um, Vivian is also mentioned or featured in Selfless Love. So this can be a companion, these two. And these are... Um Thriller, romance, suspense. Yep, suspenseful, romance, thrillers. And these two take place in present day. I forgot to mention that. Okay, and that was going to be my question as well. is Because um, I was wondering if if um, the one book was in the 70s, was the next book maybe in the 80s or the 90s, and then up to present day. But Right, I skip. Yeah, so when I do eventually write the two short stories, one is going to take place in the late 80s, or early 90s to kind of fill the gap there. Okay. And now I also noticed um, you have, it seems like you, you work with multicultural characters. I, I would say I do. Um, Shannon obviously is African-American. Her best friend is white. Um, got Italians and, and black and Bianchi. And then Wealth of Lies, we have some surprises. Ooh, some surprises. <laughs> hey. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the current work in progress is going to be my first official interracial uh, love story. Have you noticed that because you have um, multicultural characters, that it's helped to expand your audience? Because what I've sometimes noticed, like when I do book signings, that um, if a reader come, passes the table and they're not black, sometimes if they see a black person on the cover, they think that the book is not for them. Mm -hmm. And even though a good story is a, is a, or a great story is a great story, no matter who's on the cover, mm -hmm. but sometimes, um, they feel a little uncomfortable wondering, okay, well, is this story really for me or would I get anything out of this story because I'm not black? Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes when they see 
another character on that cover, it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable. Have you, has this been something that you've noticed? Uh, a little bit, but sometimes I get it where they may, a uh, person who is white may assume I'm only writing about black characters or mm -hmm. stop and talk. And then um, black readers um, may only assume that I'm writing about blacks as well. Um, or may think it's something different than what it is. So that's why I decided to say it's like what you see on Lifetime. So that they kind of get the feel of um, of the story. I think that's more middle of the road that people feel comfortable with reading that type of story. It's not, it's not urban. It's not, um, I'm definitely not writing something that is completely without different ethnicities. Right. Um, so it's kind of middle of the road there. Well, well, once again, thank you for being on the show. I really, really, really enjoyed this um, conversation because we talked a little bit about everything. We talked a bit, we talked a bit about your books. We talked about your writing style. We talked about audiobooks. So we were able to pack a lot into this 30 minute interview. So I appreciate that. Thanks for flowing with me. Thank you. I was a little nervous, but I also want to let um, people know that the books are available with Amazon, but they're also available with all major book retailers online. Now, um, what do you prefer for, um, how do you prefer for people to get your books? Because I know a lot of people say that their books are available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble and so forth, but they like it when the reader orders directly from them. You know, I'm okay with someone ordering whatever is best for them. If they shop on walmart.com, they can order it there. Barnes & Noble there, Amazon there. If they want a signed copy, then they can contact me directly at their website for a signed copy. Um, so anybody that is supporting me, support me the best way that they feel comfortable ordering from whatever platform they feel comfortable. If you do order from those other platforms, please leave a review. And hopefully it will be one that, you know, gives the book some good ratings because you enjoy it. Um, but please do. Uh, thank you once again. Um, best wishes to you on your um, continued writing journey. I'm looking forward to actually reading the entire series. And especially since it's on audio, I'm yes. going to have to go ahead and download all of them now. <laughs> yes, they are. But um, once again, thank you. Thank you. Um, how how do how would you like people to reach out to you if they want to learn more about Natasha Hugh Smith? Um, you can um, Instagram, author Natasha Hugh Smith, Facebook, the same. Um, I put a lot of different posts up, and you can get an idea what the stories are about, and then you can reach out to me through that platform. Okay. Awesome. Well. You have a wonderful evening. Once again, best wishes to you. If you ever would like to come back on the show, just say the word. We'd be happy to have you. Definitely will. When the next one comes out, I'll be getting in contact with you. All right. I'll be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. That was author Natasha Hughes-Smith. I want to thank both of our authors for um, spending some time with me tonight. Um, I really enjoyed both interviews. I, I told you guys it was going to be a great show. Um, so we got to learn a little bit about leadership. We got to learn a little bit about suspenseful romance thrillers. And um, we found out that Natasha's on audiobook, y'all. So let's make sure we go out and support. So that's all we have. Now, I think I mentioned to you guys last week that I'm going to be in New Orleans this weekend. Um, if you are in the New Orleans area, I would love to see you. I am going to be attending the Sofrat Greek Weekend. Um, so I'll be there on um, the 20th for the actual festival. I'll probably be at the Henny and R&B Welcome Party on um, Friday night as well. Um, so there's a lot going on. So if you are in New Orleans, meet me at this festival. I would love to see you. Um, if we haven't seen each other in a long time, I'd love to be able to give you a hug because I miss you guys. It's been a while since I've been in New Orleans, so I really hope to see you. 
Also, I want to still congratulate my client, Shakira Henderson. Um, her book, The Authentic Book of Poems, is available everywhere books are sold. Make sure that you um, get this book. This is a great book on um, with poetry as well as a lot of spaces for you to do your own reflection. So it's a poetry slash workbook that you will really enjoy. And the cover is absolutely beautiful. It's everything. So, um, and then once again, don't forget about the graduating senior scholarship. Um, the deadline is April 30th. We want you to have your teenager fill out this application so that they can get this thousand dollars. Don't think that you don't need the money. Everybody needs the money when it comes to college. So I would love to see your child be the one to get this $1,000. The deadline is April 30th. All right. So that's all I have for tonight, guys. Um, thanks once again for joining me. Thank you for helping me to make this show continue to grow. We just um, topped 300 subscribers on YouTube and we're continuing to grow. So thank you for that. I owe all of that to you guys for your support. So um, I will see you guys tomorrow night on Black Authors Matter TV on the National Black Book Festival Facebook page. And then I want you guys to have a wonderful evening. God bless you. And um, happy reading. Thank <laughs> you.